DLC is upon us. A whole new region of Kitsukami has dropped. Finally. More field. 30 quid spent to roam new lands, hang outside Carmine's house, chat into the grandparents, and bear witness to eight new Pokemon. There really aren't anywhere near as many new Pokemon as I was expecting, especially once they said that the new area is an entire region in itself. Barely justifies the video, really, but you know, these have never really been about the ranking format for me, as it. But hey, it gives me a motive to go on about the DLC for a bit. I got worked by the promo art and trailers thinking we were getting this live mini Johto-esque region. And then the whole festival turns out to be a year four cake sale. Festival's like a bingo hall in 10 frames a second. Place is dead. Looks like a Christmas market on like January 6th. Everyone's packed up. Why are you still here trying to move Choros, my man? I did a video ranking every known Paldean Pokemon as of May. And look, I'm not just adding to the ever-growing evidence that these videos are just a platform for me to demonstrate that I have advanced observational hacky. I may do our future site. I may do. But I predicted this. I was absolutely on the mark about the Kitakami trio. Monkey Dory and Noki Doji specifically. I clocked these two are grifters from day one. Didn't trust them for a second. I knew they were hustling somehow. But this time, I can go in on them justifiably and not just off pure gut instinct as I rank all new DLC Pokemon. After knowing how the DLC goes down, I feel the egotistical need to throw in a disclaimer for this segment. Everything I'm about to say here after this sentence, I'd written out a solid two weeks before the DLC came out. And even after seeing how the story plays out, I have zero reason to change a single word of it. My view of Monkey Dory hasn't changed much in the past few months. It's not a bad Pokemon. It seems like a little bit of a character, some wee man potential. It just doesn't strike me as this massively important legend loyal trio Pokemon. It feels more like some Alolan monkey Pokemon that I just never had the random encounter for. It's failed the object permanence test and therefore you're not real. Doesn't seem like it'd be a key specimen for a region's narrative. At best in the storyline, it's the sort of Pokemon who's designed to conveniently steal a vital item towards your objective like a key or a map or something, which you then have to comically chase through a crowded marketplace smashing into cucumber vendors to get a hold of. What I know factually is conflicting with what my gut knows primarily. This creature is a member of a wee little faction called the Loyal Three, but I'm not sold on that fact. He's looking far too shifty to be loyal in my eyes, and I'd be keeping my eyes peeled wide open if I catch Monkey Dory using knockoff against me, just grifting my Pokemon's held items for good. Hey, 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 wait, 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 I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. You're giving Don Dozo that Rocky helmet back at the end of this fight. I'm me it. You're not slick, little man. If he's so loyal, how come I know damn well if this fella goes in for a handshake, I'm getting my Pokedex swiped? These things don't come easy. You think the professor hands it out to everybody? You leave a modern Pokedex in the back of an Uber, you better have their license plate tracked. Because all high tech in the Pokemon world these days has a little Rotom living inside of it, crunching the numbers, keeping your Sylveon X Barbados Slim folders private. So if Monkey Dory gets his hands near you, you're pretty much down like, like an iPhone, I don't know, 14 however, and a Rotom. Monkey Dory would get your Pokedex scrapped while selling off the Rotoms to the Japanese to fuel the ever-growing online virtual claw machine industry. Went from fueling Pokemon's largest encyclopedia to pretending to grab three-foot-tall minion plushies. It's one thing losing your phone, but now you've got to go and find a Rotom somewhere. Come on, that's like a pseudo, pseudo legendary. You can't just get O2 to send you a new Rotom like you lost your SIM card. Oh, Monkey Dory swiped your Samsung Diddy. Ah, oh, oh, insurance doesn't cover the Rotom, boss. You got a Pokemon stolen from you in that case. Oh, we could sort of Samsung, but you know, the Rotom thing, it's more of a Team Rocket insurance job. You know what I mean? You might have to give them a call, but I will send you, we'll send you the Samsung, but for now, nah, you're going Urbex exploring. Back to the bandos and hoping you manage to find a haunted house with a Rotom rough sleeping in some old VCR. And it's all because you trusted a creature called Monkey Dory. Monkey, its government given name is a play on words of Hunky Dory. There's no chance this little demon is loyal. Even its name is a gaslight. Yeah, no, no just trust the process, eh? Yeah, yeah, look at me. Monkey Dory, yeah? Remember, everything is Monkey Dory. So no cashing out. 
the lot of yous, keep your bags filled, that's all I say, because I'm telling yous, that Okie Doji coin is going to take off any day now. Applin is back and more worm than ever. Except it's not an Applin though, we've all come to find out. Applin was just trying to sauce up some pancakes and spilled it all over himself, the little klutz. And he started glowing white, evolving at the breakfast table like, Right, that's me off then. Nope, 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 nobody pressed that B button. I did this to myself. Gotta learn to stop spilling that syrup one of these days. I do like Diplin, but in the exact same way I like Daplin. Because it has that unfinished energy to it. You can't convince me Diplin isn't done evolving here. He's one more syrup apple away from becoming double Diplin. You'd think for a third Applin evolution, it'd have changed type at least. Make him fairy, like a tree. Make him a poison apple. Orphworm could evolve into a Diplin if you find him a syrup apple big enough for him to sleep in. I wanna like it way more. It'd have been enough of a game changer for me if the worm weren't shy. Just have the worm poking his head out as the standard. I'm sat here just waiting for him to unleash that syrup move. I await the Turnley speed reduction, all so I can get a glimpse of how good this design could have been. People staring at Diplin be like, top requested but hey maybe they're saving the third evolution for the indigo disc the worms keeping himself dormant until the blueberry academy perhaps more breakfast condiments are to be spilled my first reaction to the Loyal 3, I had Fezendipity as the cleanest looking out of them. Debatably true, but seeing them all in the flesh, all the main storyline Pokemon have a bit of personality to them. It's just that a shifty monkey and a giant panda dog, they could show a lot more flair. Charismatically, Fezendipity is soft locked. Because it's a bird. You go to one of the Loyal 3's meeting spot for a scrap. Okie doji sitting idle, swinging his chain about, cracking his knuckles, sparking up a ciggy. Absolute power play. Mid-fight, he's got his tongue out, hands primed and ready to be chasing Scooby and Shaggy through a series of opposite doors. Little things, but they give off some charm. Tells you what kind of Pokemon he is. But Fez and Dippity, what's this one doing? Oh, you know, it's iconic flying stationary at three frames a second. But you know, what can you do? It's a bird. It might look kind of nice, but I wouldn't call it an entertaining Pokemon, I guess. Fair play to them at least though. Poison and Fairy. What a type combo. I thought they'd have just gone with the generic flying combo with it. And I'm sure there's a rich real life folktale lore behind the Loyal Three. It obviously there must be. You could improv some culture from the three off the top of your head like, well, Monkey Dory is Actually heavily based on the God of Good Fortune in many culture. How about that? Did our though, did I? The brains behind it, it doesn't make Monkey Dory look any less like he's about to nick the stunt pegs off the back of my acro bike. The difference here though, Fezendipity is a bit more refined. But since they're all thieves and Ed Ed and Eddie of Majora's Masks, Okie Doji, Crypto Scammer, Monkey Dory shifts copies of Frigo Returns and steals onion bags off the back of lorries. But Fezendipity, it looks more regal than the both of those. He's more of an upper class crime commere, you know, like your classic tax evasion or stealing spices from third world countries. I do rate Signature a fair bit. Creative banger, but it's gonna have to be a downgrade from the pre-evolved form for me. It's because of how your man there revolves around the face on the jar. The gooey green fella jumps out and it doesn't take away from how it emotes mainly on the lower half. With Sinister, that gets lost from the goo having its own face and personality. The bowl doesn't become the face anymore. It's just a wee jacuzzi for him. It does look a bit jarring in comparison as well. The best way I can describe what I'm feeling, Sinistra looks like it had a really clean design at first, but for some reason, they took that and made it into a Mario Sunshine enemy, and it was made to look way more jarring. Like King Boo, a great design. Yeah, but for some reason, one time only, he shows up in that game looking like he's scrammed five kilograms of UFO gummies. I still think King Boo's Sunshine design is still a great design. It's jarring, but in a really good sense. So Sinistra is still pretty great. It just doesn't hit as hard as Poltergeist is all. I do love the little menace it attempts to be. Tries to gaslight people into drinking it, pretending to be tea to drain their life force. Ruse is generally unsuccessful. Hey, generally? So you're saying there's a chance? Like a noticeable amount of people 
have done it. You're saying there's a small percentage of people out there in the Pokemon world who do drink the mystery pint that's left on the floor in the smoking area. People who take the risk on scranning their leftover chicken nuggets from what looks to be a deserted McDonald's table. Being that much of a scrounger, you're asking to have your life force taken. How lazy are you that you can't get the kettle on, make yourself a cup of tea? You're really going out and drinking the dirty pints of tea. Ah, that is it. No more life force for you. That's it. Give me that. Here's your Shadow Realm season ticket being that cheap. I'm not surprised Okidoji was part of the trio of grifters who stole Ogre Pond's masks. I've been saying months ago, this is the face of a scam crypto coin. He probably needed Ogre Pond's mask just to not be noticed in public after hustling the Kitakami region to invest in his little Dogecoin with his face slapped on it. Now that he's revived, he's gonna go from stealing masks to shifting them Monkey Dory NFTs. There's an alternate universe where Okidoji was never a Pokemon and wears a monocle like CryptoZoo. I run the zoo. I'm the mayor of Crypto Zoo. I can't shake off that financial scam radar in my brain, especially knowing I was right in the end. But it is a sound looking Pokemon though. I do like the big fella a fair amount. Okidoji has grown on me into being my favorite out of the loyal three. At face value, it used to be Fezendipity, but in person, Okidoji just one points on charisma. Fezendipity is just a bird with the iconic catchphrase, Yep, Okie Doji has the most drip too. They all have the toxic chains, I know, but his did not need to go this hard. He may look like a marketable scam animal, but I immediately trust the guy way more than Monkey Dory. Okie Doji, Okie Doggy. Okie dokie. Way more reassuring. That's what you want to hear. A resounding yeah. Okie Doki isn't a gaslight, it's a phrase of action. Plus, he's a dog. A, a large panda like. Bad dog. Loyal three? Well, there's nothing more loyal than man's best friend. Ogre Pond. It's not quite the Shrek like Ogre you'd have maybe assumed the franchise full of big meaty creatures would have gone for. Got no mythical talking donkey Pokemon to ride along with him either. Maybe you should have saved Calyrex and that little horse riding fusion gimmick for Ogre Pond. Walking into the resting place of the mythical Ogre to witness. Good day up, donkey. I mean... It follows you about for a while though. Ogre Pond's already decided on its donkey. Better whack out the Diplin, start making waffles. Part of me does still wish that this small remote village could justifiably feel true primal fear knowing an 800 pound ogre's goon cave is just down the road. But knowing she's just a little guy with a little Vince McMahon strut waltzing into the festival knowing it's hers. She owns the place like Jesus rocking up for Christmas dinner. She's not a Freakzilla World of Warcraft mob kind of ogre, but she's got a lot of charm to her and a lot of fresh Majora's Mask style form changes. So I can't complain. And it justified my gut instincts about Monkey Dory and Okie Doji completely. Ogre Pond is a victim here. Like, oh, oh, look at the ogre. Oh, get him out of here and stay out. Oh, I reckon it'd have a lot more than three forms. Bet Monkey Dory's grifted the other masks off him. Oh, wait. Oh no, that line doesn't work anymore, because that actually did happen. I was too spot on, Donnie. Yeah, that'll show me for trying to write videos in advance. Predicting Ogre Pond wasn't the big bad of the DLC. You know, it's whatever. That's probably been all over Reddit for the past four months. But dead on predicting Ogre Pond was getting its masks finessed by these dodgy looking fellas. Even from an offhand joke taking the piss out of Monkey Dory. That's a bit freaky. Uh, maybe I do have hacky on me, but I think I'm, I think I'm gonna hit the roulette tables. I'm, I'll see you guys in a bit. I didn't expect it to be looking all smiles and sunshines under that mask either. I wasn't sure at first if it was gonna be, I guess, like a mimic you case where its true face is a mystery. But I'm happy that she's a funny little fella. That's one thing the modern games can do. It's flesh out the personality of a lot of Pokemon, the legendaries especially. It wouldn't be the same, would it, if Ogre Pond were just in a living room sized forest waiting for you like the Master Sword. You catch him, give him that Miss Finster detention and sentence him to an eternal in the box. It's whatever, but it's different here. You know, when you see them out and about on the prowl, emoting outside of a free frame animation, it goes a long way in making you invested in these new Pokemon. As a player of the Pokemon, 
sometimes. I don't go out of my way to complete the Pokedex. I keep telling Oak, I keep telling, I don't have time for your little certificate and handshake, or I've got way too much to do. I'm a very busy man. No time to be spending completing the Pokedex. I've got far too much on my plate, completely taking the piss out of the Pokedex. But when Ursaluna Blood Moon is the reward for the Kitsukami Pokedex side quest, how can you pass that up? They're finally working around how they can introduce Hisuian forms in the modern setting. And I did love the original Ursaluna, but I always wondered why it looked so docile. It just looks so unbothered, even in its official art. Look at him, you can even see him half ass in a roar. You step on the guy's territory and he starts yawning at you. Wants to be fuming at those kids kicking a football on the side of his cave. But he's had a long 14 hour shift down in the Crimson Mylands. Or oh, back's aching more than usual. Comes out like, hey you kids, uh Jeez, hey, you know the rest. Blood Moon Ursaluna got the chiropractor in, started doing glute stretches. Now he's walking on two legs, looking like the reason why Cyborg Hariyamas will one day exist. You'd be lucky if the doctors could convert you into a Hariyama after a blood-lusted Ursaluna catches you playing one touch, one bounce near his cave walls. I don't even think you could be one of the 108 souls to contribute to building a spirit tomb. Blood Moon Ursaluna consumes the con conscience along with the bones. What a demon. I'm a little disappointed that there's so few new Pokemon in the DLC so far, but I can't be complaining. That's such a wild card. Big day for Luigi's Mansion coded Pokemon. When it comes to these new regional fo- Wait, no, 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 I mean, conveniently similar species, but are actually completely unrelated Pokemon. It's easy to think, why not the Pokemon who need to get the forms? You know, the weak and the boring ones. I see it both ways. Why not milk the creative juices on an already creatively lucrative design and just give us more bangers from existing bangers? You know, we don't need another boring Persian because Persian was already boring. But I've got to agree with many of you here. The pre-evolved form Poltergeist is superior. You can't compete with how well of a design choice it is to make it seem as though it's a emoting through the jar. The little Rayman hands holding the tea scooper. Sinister being a whole bowl of gaslighting goo is a whole bowl of fun. But it's obvious this little fella is on the A side. I know where I'd be drinking my tea from or my green mystery goo. Unless he's full of monster. Then I'm, not, I'm not going near him. They have different patterns though. The poltergeists with monster energy inside of them. Their jars would have a five finger death punch tattoo on the back of them. A bit too classy looking for that though you'd think. Poltergeist for the sophisticated monster drinkers. Nah, nah I'm not like the rest of them goths. You know, I, yeah, like, fair enough. I do shotgun four monster tinnies a day, right? But I'm a bit more pinkies out about it. I didn't even realize when evolving it that the item required for evolution depended on the form. So I guess I just got lucky and found me the right poltergeist for whatever teacup I randomly found in that cave next to that Sandshrew and his gang ready to release the hounds on me. Sandshrew be like when you knock on the door and ask your mum if the boys can come in to play. 